Welcome PCS members and friends to our uh, today's uh, PCS IBS seminar. Um, it is a great pleasure to have with us uh, today uh, Professor Stefano Lepri from uh, Institute for Complex Systems uh, in uh, Firenze. And I would like to invite our scientific host, Alexei, to introduce our speaker. Please, Alexei. Yeah, uh, thank you, Tilan. So, uh, as Tilan has already announced, let me repeat, we have today with us Professor Stefan Alepri from Institute of Complex Systems in Florence. And he will be talking about thermalization of isolated harmonic networks under conservative noise. And so let me briefly introduce the speaker. So Stefan received his PhD in 96 at the University of Bologna and then uh, moved uh, to Dresden, which to the Max Planck Institute for Physics of Complex Systems, with, which many of us here know. And then he was a postdoc in the um, University of Florence and Insti National Institute of Applied Optics and National Institute of Physics of uh, Materials. And since 2004, he's a permanent member at the Institute, at his current institute, the Institute for Complex Systems in uh, Florence. And his uh, main research interests are centered around nonlinear dynamics, statistical mechanics, and complex systems. And with this, please, Stefano, uh, the screen is all yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. Hi, Sergey. I see you. You're connected. <laughs> okay, so uh, I want to tell you about uh, these uh, results that I got on this model, on this problem uh, concerning thermalization of uh, uh, networks uh, with the conservative noise. So the general framework is the one of non-equilibrium processes in uh, nonlinear systems. Uh, you may think about of uh, the standard situation which uh, you have an amine system with uh, an integrable part plus a perturbation. There are several uh, important examples of classical many-body system which are completely integrable. The, the well, most well-known is the harmonic uh, lattice, uh, and there are also others in one dimension, like the Toda chain or the hard point gas, which is a, an ensemble of point-like particles colliding with the elastic collision in one dimension. Uh, roughly speaking, the non-equilibrium processes can be divided in two classes. One is the concerns relaxation or ergodization as in the famous and classic problem of the fermi pastola gu partition. Uh, and the other is concerned steady state transport, or at least uh, non-equilibrium steady states, in which, for example, you can apply external th thermal fields, th thermal gradients, and study how the behavior system uh, evolves. And one example that we studied uh, recently concerns this uh, anomalous and diffusive regimes, uh, in the, for example, in the, in, the, in the perturbed Toda chain. If you have the, the, the standard Toda chain, you expect ballistic behavior. When you add the perturbations, typically you, well, what you observe, you would expect to observe is anomalous behavior, so a super diffusive energy transport, but there are indeed several regimes that confirm that this nonlinear system can have very interesting non-equilibrium dynamics. Now, just to come to, to the main topic, uh, this work is motivated by two, uh, two ideas. The first one is an idea that actually originates from the work done by Sergei and his collaborators in recent years. And the, the idea is that when, when you have an, an, integrable system, an integrable system perturbed by some uh, non-integrable perturbation, you can imagine that this defines um, a, a network of interaction among the unperturbed actions. So you, you have the, the actions that are conserved in the, in the, uh, in the integrable limit, you, you, you switch on some perturbation and you can imagine that there is effectively a kind of nonlinear interaction between these action in the, in this actions in the in action space. So that the, the main question is uh, uh, that came out of this series of work works is, is that somehow the connectivity or the type of, of topo topology of this network should affect or determine 
the relaxation and ergodic properties of water. And the second motivation is the it would be interesting to go beyond the standard uh, one-dimensional or Euclidean lattices and study more complex structures, like for example, uh, networks. So situation in which the interaction between your degrees of freedom is not restricted to the standard regular lattice, but something more complete, more complicated. And this, of course, introduces new phenomena like topological disorder, localization, all the things that, of course, are extremely interesting and that uh, are probably less, much less understood. So uh, in this talk, I would like to, to tackle these topics uh, basing on starting from a model, a class of models, which um, are based on what I call a kind of hybrid dynamics. So instead of dealing with the genuine linear system, it is convenient for many reasons to start with the simple deterministic, possibly linear integrable system and replace the nonlinear interaction with some form of stochastic interaction, some, some form of stochastic dynamics. Under the requirement that this stochastic dynamics preserves the basic conservation laws, for example, energy, momentum, and so on. This class of models that I will uh, explain in detail later has, uh, has been considered many, often in the mathematical physics literature. There are some names listed there of people who introduced and studied this model because they, they allow to, to, to derive, uh, for example, hydrodynamic equation in a rigorous way with, with, um, with the methods, with a series of, me of methods. So they, they, they allow to, to do several, to perform a lot of analytical calculations in, uh, in, uh, in many contexts. Uh, as I said, you, I want to add this ingredient of um, heterogene heterogeneity. So I will consider both the quench disorder case than the case of a, a classical elastic network that I will detail later. And th this is something which is uh, probably useful, or at least as a toy model for many real systems, like macromolecules, for example, that you can consider a protein in its native state, for example, as a kind of a network of uh, monomers, monomers interacting on a, on a, on a well-defined native, native, native structure, but also for other applications like uh, networks and nanowires and nanotubes or even metamaterials. So just to give you the, uh, an image, uh, what I have in mind is the kind of, uh, of uh, disordered lattice, if you wish, or a random array of, of points, of sites, which are, which are interacting through harmonic forces. Uh, this figure is a little bit misleading because actually what I want to, to consider is, is a, a discretization of a field on, on a non-homogeneous structure. So I, I just jumped to the, to the definition of the model, mathematical definition of the model, which is the following. So what I consider is, is this Hamiltonian. You see is a, is, a, is a quadratic Hamiltonian. P and Q are the canonical conjugate variables. Uh, the matrix phi is a dynamical matrix, so it's the matrix that defines your elastic constant, if you wish. And uh, the um, consider, as I said, a scalar field. And if you consider the, the equation of motion, which are given by this, uh, these simple linear couple linear equations, you see that this is a very simple deterministic dynamics, which we, of course we can we can solve uh, with, with simple methods. So the idea is now to add on top of this deterministic dynamics a, a, a random a, a stochastic process which simulates in a way a kind of nonlinearity. How the, uh, the process works like this, you have to you fix a sequence of random times. Uh, so you, you have the this, this system of time t and after a time t plus tau, you choose a couple of sites at random, uh, a couple mn, with some given probability w and m that you, cho you choose as you like. So once you have done this, you apply the following transformations, very simple, just, just amounts to exchange 
the momenta of these uh, of these sites, the momenta of these two particles. So as you see, this this process, which is deterministic, uh, uh, so you, you choose the couple at random, but you do the, the the collision deterministic. It would correspond to a kind of elastic collision between two uh, two particles with equal mass. Um, so what you do, you repeat these. Uh, dynamics and you can you have of course to choose also the distribution of the time intervals between uh, between which you you make this this uh, random update and you just fix some given distribution for example you may take a poissonian distribution with some finite average uh, average tool so these dynamics as you see will exactly yes um, yeah, I have, of course, a simple question. So yes. is it important that the finite, um, that the intervals have a, um, a finite average? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, actually, for what I'm going to say, this is something that I... Yes, it is. Okay. In general, uh, one could choose another model, but for, for the, the, the case that we study, they're finite. Okay. 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 Thanks. So, uh, as you see, the, this dynamics conserves energy and momentum. So, if the original linear dynamics conserve momentum, so if this phi is what is called a Laplacian matrix, so it has uh, the sum of its rows is, is, is zero, then the total momentum of the of the model is conserved. And just let me repeat this W, which is the probability of choosing two uh, two sites. It's, it's an ingredient of the model. It can be assigned also to include some long range interaction or some form of more complicated interaction with respect to the usual nearest neighbor uh, case. So this is the model. How do we proceed to, to make some analysis of this model? So since this is a linear system, the deterministic dynamics is a linear system, the most natural, simple way is to perform the usual transformation to normal mode coordinate, coordinates, which we all know. So we assume that the matrix phi has some as a set of orthonormal eigenvalues, eigenvectors with eigenfrequencies W nu, actually W nu square. And uh, for the time being, let me assume that these uh, quantities are real. So what you do, you, you perform a transformation for the variables small q, small p, to the variables capital Q, capital P, the usual thing. And you know that this, what this uh, brings in the, for the deterministic dynamics. So the question is what happens to the random dynamics, to the stochastic collision dynamics? And now if you just uh, write down the collision rules, you immediately realize that the, the, the dynamics amounts to a transformation that does not change the q's, because of course I don't change the, the, Q, the Q variables. Why I just change the capital P and, and the way I change the capital P is given by this equation. So at each collision, the capital P vector and dimensional vector is transformed by this relation where this uh, V this is an external product of, of two vectors. So it's a matrix. And this uh, uh, vector V, which is actually a function of uh, N of M. So the, 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 the couple of particles that I make collide is just a function of the eigenvectors. So once I know the eigenvectors for every, every couple and M, I know this matrix V. Huh? Um, what is this geometrical, the, the, the meaning of this transformation? As you may have seen, this form of this matrix is the one which is called the in the linear algebra, the householder transformation, the householder matrix. It has a well-defined geometrical meaning. It's just uh, a reflection about around an, an hyperplane, which contains the origin and which is orthogonal to the unit vector V. V is a unit vector, I didn't say it. So it has several properties, but just to give you uh, uh, an idea, it, it amounts just to choose a random V take the plane uh, orthogonal to it and reflect, mirror reflect the, ve the vector P uh, uh, across this plane. So you can think of random dynamics as a sequence of 
reflections in, in phase space around this randomly chosen upper plane. On top of that, we have, we have of course, the, the deterministic dynamics. So let me do another step, uh, just another coordinate transformation. This is not the last one, there are some more. <laughs> and it's the usual transformation to the A, A dagger coordinates that we all know. So you just transform, you introduce the new variables, you start from the capital Q, capital P, you do the usual transformation that we do when we want to quantize the harmonic oscillator, but it's a classical thing. So you introduce this diagonal matrix, which is contains all the eigenfrequencies. The Hamiltonian becomes, becomes a simple quadratic form. You can rewrite the evolution, uh, the collision map, so the, 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 the action of this collision in, the, in this way. It's a linear map that, that transforms the A according to this rule. And again, the matrix M that enters in this, this transformation is, is a function of the vector V, and of the eigenfrequencies of the mode. So once you know the linear spectrum, you know exactly this matrix for each, uh, for each collision. I, I, I recall you that this matrix still depends on the pair of collisions that I choose. So it's, it's a, it actually should, depend, should be a, a function of N and M for, for each collision. So it, this is a random matrix in a sense. It is real, it is not symmetric, it is even important because if I apply twice the same transformation, I get the same state. And on, I have to, uh, uh, to complete the description, I have just to, to introduce the diagonal part. So the, the, the free evolution, which is given by this equation, where, which is simply the evolution of the harmonic oscillators uh, of, the, of the normal modes. So if you put everything together, you have an exact map that transforms the variables at each collision, uh, uh, which is given by this, this expression, which is doubly random, yes, because it's random in the choice of tau, the collision interval, and it's random in the choice of m. So you can see the dynamics of a sequence of multiplication of random matrices uh, defined by this, by this relation. So consider that this transformation couples all modes because these are not diagonal matrices. So all the all the modes are coupled by this transformation, as you expect from a, from a real nonlinear term, and it breaks, of course, the integrability of the mode. Uh, as a byproduct, you see that um, this uh, this map, which is, I repeat, is exact, uh, is an exact numerical algorithm to solve the equation of motion. So you just uh, need to iterate, to multiply by matrices, define a matrix and multiply your state vector by it, and you can exactly integrate the, the numeric, the, the numerical, the, the, the model as, as a kind of event-driven uh, dynamics. So this, uh, this is something which is useful if you want to perform efficient uh, simulations of this model. So let me jump to another transformation, which is a transformation to action angle variables. Okay, this is a standard thing. So ju just uh, introduce amplitude and phases of this A. Now you, you, you do some algebra and you see that the, 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 the collision map, you see, clearly see here, uh, you can define the new action after the collision um, as a function of the old one. And notice that now all the, the this, this term Z, which contains all the actions, is a kind of mean field coupling. And so it's a kind of coupling in which all the actions, as I said, are determined by, by a, a global term in, in, the, in, in the, the action space. So, so as, as I said, the, the total energy is conserved with this, this transformation, but look, the, uh, consider that the total, the sum of total action, the, 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 the observable that you will, uh, consider uh, the, the, the total number in, in the quantum language is not, is not conserved. So the, the, the dynamics conserve just the, the, the total energy. Uh, okay, this is a linear map uh, that you can recast in a, in a more compact way like this. Okay, up to now, it was just an exact uh, rewriting of the equation of motion. Now I want to consider an approximation. Stefano, do you hear yes. me? Yes. Uh, why is this map not uh, symplectic? Because the transformation is, is not an, uh, is not a Hamiltonian transformation. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, just a random thing. 
I mean, I, I tried to check it, but it's not. <laughs> and from these, uh, so to say, from these pair exchanges, right? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. It is the, the, of course the deterministic part. Uh, it is simplistic because the system is, uh, is Hamiltonian, but the collision uh, does not preserve this property. So the energy is conserved, but it's not symplectic. Yes. Yes. And uh, uh, but there are no attractors, right? Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. So yes, you still see, I mean, are it's it's, it's um, by a phase space, but it's not simplex. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever there are the deterministic examples, like for example, these deterministic thermostats. If you constrain the dynamics to have a fixed kinetic energy, so the system has some some symmetry properties, but it's, it's not symplectic anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, very quickly, I just want want to propose you an approximation. So it's a situation in which uh, I, I can derive some equation, approximate equation, which I call kinetic equations. So if you assume that there is a finite collision probability per size, so tau has to be finite in this case, uh, you can perform uh, standard steps, some usual steps, I would say, uh, to derive effective equations for the actions. So, for example, you can imagine that uh, if you have many collisions per, per unit time, or at least on a time scale longer with respect to the typical collision rate, inverse of the collision rate, uh, the, the angles variables are randomized very fast. So you can imagine that you can average your dynamics over an ensemble of random phases. So in this way, you just get rid of the variables. Huh? And you can write an equation for the average phases. So I, I keep the same since i, but please keep in mind that this i should be considered as an average over an ensemble of phases. So it should be something like i bar. I just, just keep the same same symbol for simplicity. But that, it, it, this i has a slightly different meaning. So if you average over an, an uniform distribution, you can write a closed equation for the i's alone. Uh, you see this equation, this, this is a map, uh, this is a map for a teach collision. The eyes, of course, are constant during the free evolution. So basically, this is the only, the only quantity, the only equation that matters. And you, if you prefer, which is sometimes more, more, more clear, is to, one can write the equations also in, in the new variables, which are the mod energies. So the, the omega nu times i nu. Of course, it is just multiplication of, of the, the above equation. And you see that this, this transformation uh, is just a linear transformation. This is the main, main thing of, uh, of the dynamics. So, so the, the, the random dynamics in, in, in of these average uh, quantities is now a linear transformation and is defined by this matrix. So notice that this is still a random matrix because I just keep the same sequence. It's like a, saying that I consider an ensemble of trajectories with the same uh, uh, realization of the noise and just random phases at the beginning, homogeneous random phases. So what is the next step? You can imagine that if you, it's like when you do the usual calculation of the level of exponents, if you wish. You, you multiply these random matrices, you can imagine that you can replace the, uh, this product with, with the, an average of the collision distribution. So the, the, the question can be further averaged by, uh, by um, replacing K with its average with respect to the, the distribution W. So if you want to do this further step, what you end up with is the following equation, also do the continuum time leap. Huh? So I assume that the, the, the evolution of this energy is low with respect to some scale. And I get this final result. So this final result, as you, as you see, is nothing it's very reminiscent, and actually it is, uh, uh, a standard master equation in continuous time. So you see it as the typical form of the master equation. Once you interpret this R, this R new, new prime, as transition probabilities. So the, the good thing is that the transition probability can be computed explicitly once you know the, the eigenvectors of, of the linear model. Because as, as I said, you, uh, this, this V, are just uh, uh, are just given by this expression, so they are just function of the uh, eigenmodes. 
So once you know the, eigen, the eigenmodes and the distribution W, uh, you ju just average this quantity and you can compute exactly within this approximation, the transition rates. So what we expect from the question like this, of course we expect uh, that this relaxation spectrum, the spectrum of this operator, this linear operator will define a relaxation spectrum. So the possible relaxation rate of, of the system we expect the system is ergodic, and this is no surprise because we have a, a, a random process uh, as a kind of Markov process. We, we expect this. The first I get value u one the so so the the, the, the equipartition state which all the e are identical will be correspond to an again value mu mu uh, one equal to zero. So if you want to study for relaxation in a finite system, what, what is important is the spectral gap of this operator. So it's basically yeah, the value that of the second again value due to the, the relaxation of time. Another uh, remark is the fact is if the density for example, the cumulative density of the values of the operator. Uh, go to zero when mu goes to zero as a power law. So you can call this uh, uh, scaling law, um, you can define this, this exponent, which is the equivalent to the, the well known uh, spectral dimension. If you define this parameter, then you can uh, argue that mu2 refining system should be inversely proportional to n to the mu half. So in a sense, the information about the, the scaling of this, uh, um, of this uh, spectrum, of the spectral density, gives you immediate information about thermalization. Uh, if this, this uh, spectrum is gapped, so if, if this uh, density does not go to zero, to zero, it means that there is at relaxation time, which is not the properties of this operator, you immediately get information about um, relaxation to, ergo to ergodic state. Okay, just a quick thing about uh, I, I, I presented the question in a very general uh, setting. Um, I can specialize the calculation for the standard uh, Euclidean lattices, for example, for the uh, well known one dimensional case. In this case, uh, I'll, I'll say. In general, if you have a translation invariant system, you expect the matrix phi to be a circular matrix. So a matrix that has uh, rows that are just uh, rotation uh, of, of the same. So in this case, we, it is well known that the, the eigenvectors are the usual plane waves. And uh, you can compute, since you know the eigenvectors, you can compute the, the, the operator exactly. And remarkably, if you take, for example, a, the case in which you just perform nearest neighbor collisions. So, so you take this, uh, you just change the moment of two neighboring particles. The matrix K and the operator R uh, are just constant. So the, the, in this case, the operator is it's known exactly. It's just a matrix. And you see this matrix is uh, already interesting. So it's an almost diagonal matrix. So it, it has uh, a diagonal part, which is of order one, plus uh, of diagonal terms, which are of order one over n. So you can, it is tempting to, to estimate the eigenvalues of these operators by a kind of a diagonal approximation. So just, just neglecting uh, the, the, the off diagonal. And you see that the, the relaxation spectrum has a, has a vanishing spectral gap. So the, 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 the second eigenvalue is roughly proportional to one over n squared which tells you that uh, uh, this is a kind of um, hydrodynamic relaxation. So the, the, the typical relaxation time scale goes like uh, the inverse of the square of the size uh, of the system. And then you can may generalize this to a more general collision rule and find an approximation of the spec like this. So uh, this example has been already considered in the literature, but I, I just uh, recall it for, for completeness. Uh, and now let me turn to two uh, concrete uh, examples, which I, I want to test uh, this approximation, this kinetic approximation. And I take two models, two, at least three, uh, 
two classes of models. The one is the standard, the one-dimensional chain with quenched disorder. Is the usual disorder harmonic chain with pinning potential and some uh, randomness in the um, in the pinning uh, pinning force constants. So you know that take for example this R um, as uniform random variables distributed in zero uh, W. Uh, in, 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 uh, in your group, you start you studied a lot these months in the past. Um, so as we as we know the 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 the, the, the problem of eigenvalue the eigenvalue problem is is, uh, is well known is it, it amounts to find that there's uh, eigenstates which are typically localized, they are the so-called Anderson modes, they are exponentially localized with some typical uh, localization length, which uh, decreases upon increases W, increasing W, which is the disorder strength. This is the first class of, of models, the first example, the disorder chain. Uh, the second class is a more kind of uh, neck uh, structure so you you take a ring an harmonic chain on a ring periodic boundary condition and you add some links uh, to other sites with defined by this matrix cij and you i consider two cases one is the cases with all the ji's are identical so you have a kind of uh, mean field coupling so all all the the sites are, are coupled with the same strength and by the way, this is a case in which uh, the, the, the matrix, the matrix phi, is still a circular matrix. So the eigenvectors are Fourier modes even in this case. Okay. So it's, it's, in a sense, it is a translation invariant system. The other case is the uh, well-known small world network, the newman watts strogatz in which you take this Cij to be either 1 or 0 with some probability p or 1 minus p. So it is a well-known model in, in network uh, in network dynamics. So it, you just have uh, random connections uh, between uh, sites chosen with this probability p. So p is a measure of the disorder in sense. So the, the, the larger is p when p approaches one system is, is more is more disordered. So now I, I want to show you what what is uh, the structure of this operator, the operator that defines this master equation. In, for these three models. Ah, okay, I didn't. Uh, I have to also to specify the collision rules because, of course, this is another ingredient of the model. So, since you, as you see, these both these uh, these models are start with a, a kind of uh, a ring, so a kind of uh, one-dimensional structure. For simplicity, I just discuss the case in which I take either um, nearest neighbor collisions or next to nearest neighbor collisions. So I choose the first neighbor or the second neighbor with yes. I may choose, as, as I mentioned at the beginning, even more for the morning, just, just let me stick to this nearest neighbor, so next near, nearest neighbor's case. So let, let's look at the disorder chain and look uh, at the structure of the operator and the relaxation spectrum. So in this figure, I compare to uh, to values W. So I remind you that W is a disorder strength. So W 0 0.1 means weak disorder. W 10 means very strong disorder. So you see that there is a big difference in these two cases. So th this is the form of the operator. So the matrix R that enters the, 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 the master equation. So you see that in weak disorder, you have a very homogeneous structure. So you have a diagonal elements and all the off-diagonal elements are more or less homogeneous. The situation is very different in the in the case of strong disorder, where you have uh, you start to see a, a, an homogeneous distribution of the entries of these matrices. Huh? So th th this really looks like a, as a kind of, of of random matrix. And if you compare the the, the relaxation spectra, so the eigenvalues of the operator, this mu. I, I make a comparison with three different approaches. The, the, the blue lines are the exact the, the numerical calculation of the of the spectrum. So in, uh, I do the same procedure that you do when you compute the lapun of, lapun of exponents. So you just perform this uh, QR decomposition and, and so on. 
So this would be, in a sense, the, the blue line, blue dots would be the numerically exact solution of the of the relaxation spectrum. The the crosses uh, are uh, the what I call the the, the weak disorder expansion. I don't explain what it is. It's just an approximation of of, of the of the operator and the. Green is the diagonal. So I just take the diagonal elements of this matrix. So you see the situation is pretty different in the two cases, but in, at least for the, the smallest, the, 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 the smallest eigenvalues are quite well reproduced by, by, by this approach, except for the diagonal approximation uh, doesn't work very much well, very well in the, the disorder case. Uh, Professor so in Yes. We have a question yes, from okay. Sergey. Uh, yeah, Stefano. So I'm a bit puzzled. So this uh, bottom right uh, uh, figure shows the strong uh, disorder, strong disorder yes. case, right? Yes. And uh, and your uh, uh, your rule of um, uh, exchanging the momenta, I think, was only nearest neighbor or something. Like yes. That, right? Yes. Yes. And uh, your endless modes are strongly localized. Yes. Yes. So how comes that you get uh, uh, that you get the distant kind of if I interpret this figure correctly, distant uh, large distance coupling, so to say, or what? What am I getting wrong here? Yeah, you see the the um, uh, the, the eigenvectors are ordered by by frequencies. No. So so I order the eigenvectors yes. by increasing frequencies. So. Uh, as you know, uh, this doesn't mean that they are close or far. So they can be any, anywhere. So it could be that I, I couple two eigenvectors. Uh, well, I understand that. Okay, okay, thank you. I, I will comment on this later, in a few slides later. So just to have an idea, since I mentioned at the beginning the idea of, a, of an action network. So what is nice about this model is that I, and now I have the, the exact, uh, at least in this approximation, the exact operator in action space. So now I can try to look uh, what is the topology of the connections in, in, uh, in this action, in the same spirit that I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, now, the problem is that these R, these uh, transition rates uh, are all non-vanishing, as you see from the definition. So this W, this quantity uh, V square, in general, it's not vanishing because the, the eigen modes are, are always different from zero. So um, this R is, is cannot be zero exactly. No. So if I want just to, for, for the sake of a representation, I can try to represent this operator R as a kind of a pseudo adjacency matrix is by setting, by considering to, to be connected the two modes that are whose connection, whose uh, 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 transition rate is larger than some threshold. So, so something at 10 to the minus four, something like that. So, and, and now I compare the structure of the network in, in these two cases with disorder, stroke disorder. Uh, I don't know to what extent this, this, the upper figure is clear, but you see that it, there, is, there is some difference in the two cases, which you, that you appreciate better if you do uh, the, the standard analysis of uh, degree distribution. So you compute the histogram of the number of uh, connected sides, sites, connected actions, according to this rule, uh, uh, the histogram of the degree, so the, num the number of, of, of connection for each side. And you see there is a, a marked difference in these two cases. So in, in, the, small, in the small disorder, you clearly see a peak around the uh, this is an, a network of 50 oscillators, so the, the connectivity is, is around 50, so it means that every action is connected to all the other actions, uh, according to this criteria, while the situation is different in the, um, in the strongly disordered case, where you see that there is a degree distribution picked around uh, 10 or, or something. So I would consider this as an example of what Sergei would call a short range uh, network as, as compared with the long range networks. Uh, network. So you see that upon increasing the disorder, you tune somehow the connectivity of this network. This is just another, just let me, okay. Uh, you tune the connectivity of this network, you increase, you decrease the connectivity upon increasing W, the disorder. 
Uh, this is just another example, same thing. Uh, it's uh, the mean field model, the, the, the one in which I call all the sites with the same strength. Um, you see that the, the agreement is uh, comparable. I just draw your attention on these point, points, these um, tar red triangles, which are the numerical simulations, which I just tested if uh, these relaxation rates computed with this kinetic approach reproduce the one that I measure in the direct numerical simulation. And you see that the agreement is, is really very, very good. I would say it's, it's most exact. Uh, finally, just to, uh, just to show you uh, this uh, small world network, this what's Newman Strogatz. So I, as I said, um, I have another another way to uh, is, is another way to introduce disorder, some form of topological disorder, and I compare here two situations: one weak disorder, one strong disorder, p equals z, um, 0.1 or 0.8, and see the situation here is is rather different with respect to the to the disorder chain. So the spectrum is still not gapped. So it, it, it seems to go to, sorry, the spectrum is, is, the, is, is well approximated by the diagonal approximation. So the matrix is uh, is rather, is more uniform, it's, it's more similar to the order case, uh, in a sense. Uh, and if you compare, for example, the degree distribution in this case, so this is the degree distribution in real space, so the, the the one that you compute by counting the, the number of connected links in real space, so in the real lattice. And the, the red one is uh, the same as I did before, so the distribution in action space. You see that the situation is very similar in both cases. So you have the, the, the uh, you, you can interpret this as a, uh, as a case in which the action network is long range for both values of, uh, of, the, of the parameter P. So I would conclude that in this um, model, we only have this long range, uh, long range uh, network. Okay, so just to conclude, the typical uh, experiment uh, with which you can compare is just uh, the um, typical thermalization experiment. So you excite a few months and you look how, how they, they relax and you compare the, the result with um, with uh, the expectation from this uh, spectrum of, of the of the operator, and uh, just to give you a quick uh, quick thing of, the, of something subtle that can, can happen. So, if you take, for example, the, the disorder chain and you consider this integrated spectral density, so you know that without disorder, this uh, uh, spectrum has to go to zero, like a square root of mu, exact as I show in the in the exact uh, result. When you switch on some disorder, you have the impression that the system becomes gapped. So you see that this, uh, uh, this density, integrated density got, goes to a finite value uh, instead of going to zero. But uh, the, the situation is different from stronger disorder. So you, you have a, uh, initially the same, the same type of behavior, then there is a crossover to the same behavior of, of the other case. So the situation can be probably uh, more subtle and just to, to summarize uh, probably I, I just just go to this uh, to this step. so the, the physical interpretation is the is the following when you are, are in the stronger disorder case or the agamuts are, are um, localized so just to answer to Sergey question if I reorder the the the, um, the eigenvectors in in, uh, in such a way that uh, they are ordered according to their position, I can imagine that this process, uh, so this is exchange of energy occurs just, just among, uh, um, um, of course, locally, since it's a short range network. And so I, I just have jumps of energy, transfer of energy between neighboring sites, neighboring modes, that could be akin to a kind of standard diffusive process. So the, the relaxation in, in can be understood in this way, that this diffusion in action space is just a diffusion in which the initial number of modes grows like a square root of T. So exactly as you do in a standard diffusion process, you expect that the, that, um, the system will, uh, will relax, for a finite system will relax on a time scale, which is inversely proportional to n square. The situation will be different in the, for weak disorder, In this case, the 
the action error is more like something which is depend on the two on, on the system size. So there will be some critical disorder, which typically sets the localization length probably of the order of the system, I guess, um, which uh, separates the two the two regimes. So just to summarize for, for the, the disorder system for the disorder chain, I would expect for a, a transition from a short range to a long range uh, uh, behavior, the, which depends on n. So, so the transition, the critical disorder should, should vanish uh, with the, with, the, with increasing n. Okay, this is the what's not the, the struggles I can jump. Just a, the few, uh, the last uh, uh, slides. A typical, uh, typical indicator of uh, relaxation to repartition is the spectral entropy which you recognize to be the Shannon entropy in mode space. So you take all the energies, you compute this quantity minus the sum of e, e nu log e nu. Assume for a moment that this is not important, that the, the, the sum of the energy is one because it, it cannot be, be rescaled like this. So for large times, when you reach a partition, this quantity goes to logarithm of n, means the F, all, the, all the e are equal. So this quantity is log n. And uh, with this idea, uh, the idea of having these two regimes, uh, you can perform two different types of approximations of these quantities, this quantity. So if you consider, for example, the simple case in which, which we excite just a single mode, uh, you can imagine these two situations. If you are in this long range action network, as I said, all the, the energy initial mode is, is uh, given equally to all the other modes. So you can do a kind of mean field approximation. You can assume that uh, the energy of the mode is given by by this this uh, oh, oh, it's just a fraction of order one over n of the remaining energy, and you can plug it uh, this uh, into the this definition and use the uh, expected decay that you get from the uh, from the linearized uh, from the collision operator. So you introduce this uh, eigenvalue mu. And this would be an, the, the, would apply to the to the mean field case to, to the long range case. On the other hand, if you are in the short range uh, action network, then you expect, as I said, a kind of uh, diffusive uh, uh, behavior in action space. And you can imagine that the, the number of modes grows like square root of t. So in an intermediate time range before reaching the final value log of n, you expect this s to grow like one half logarithm of t. So just take, a, you just plug this this uh, this argument in, the, in this equation. This is all, by the way, a, a known result for diffusion on uh, on networks. So it's it's, it's, a, it's a very simple thing. So, and you see that uh, I compare here the two cases, uh, uh, two cases, this, uh, the, and, the, and, the, and the field approximation is the, uh, the orange dotted line. In the case of the disorder chain, you, you see the two regimes. So there is a, when you have a strong disorder, you, you still have this, you, you, have, you do have this uh, uh, diffusive regime in which the, the spectral entropy grows like square root, uh, like logarithm of t. While in this in the weak disorder, you you are basically in the same case as the left panel, so you 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 are in the mean field. The mean the mean field approximation works uh, works very well. So just to conclude, since I, I think I run out of time, so the the good thing about this model, which is of course uh, a, a random model, is it's a, is that you can really derive these uh, um, kinetic equations. And you can study, construct explicitly this action network in terms of the eigenvectors and the collision rule. So once you know that, within this approximation, you can reconstruct exactly this collision rule and this action network, which is actually a binary interaction. So it just involves two, uh, two actions of variance with the nonlinear case, where in general you have three or more uh, body interaction. And the main quantity is, of course, the spectral density. So it's how the spectral density of those operator uh, behaves at small uh, mu. 
which uh, is, the, is the quantity that determines the equipartition time in, in, a, in a finite network. Uh, so the, 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 the most obvious question would be what is the relation with the genuine nonlinear network? And I would uh, say that this dynamics, this stochastic dynamics, is a kind of idealization or approximation of a situation in which you have very strong chaos. So you can imagine that there are these collisions. You know? Imagine a system with hard, hard wall collisions. Uh, so the, the, the chaos is, is very strong. So the level of time is very small. And it's also homogeneous in space because I don't make hypotheses about choosing these, uh, these uh, uh, couples in a, in a way which is not homogeneous. Uh, so with this, I just uh, thank you very much for your invitation and for your attention. I'm waiting for your questions. Uh, thank you, Professor Lepri, for this interesting uh, talk. Uh, let us thank our speaker. And we have time for questions. Uh, yes, Sergey. Yeah, Stefano. So I think I have a couple of them. Uh, let's start maybe with the uh, Lapuno. You showed that some uh, several times, probably Lapuno spectra. Yeah. Uh, can you it, it's a, okay. With respect to some lambdas, as somewhere it said Lapuno spectra. No, it, it, okay. What, what I, got, I show is not a Lapinov spectrum. It's, it's actually when, when you you have this equation. Look, you have this. Uh, you see, suppose you start with this equation. Yeah. You see, this is a, a, the energies after each collision is determined by a product of this matrix K. It's a linear operator. Mm -hmm. So these matrices are random because. Uh, the, the choice of the, of the collision couple is random. So it's a, in a sense, it's similar to the Lyapunov calculation, a spectrum calculation, because it's a product of random matrices. So, so the, the spectrum, the relaxation spectrum, is, is, a, is the spectrum of an infinite product of random matrices. My, my question was that uh, maybe on the next slide you were showing a calculated spectrum. Yes. And um, a figure. I mean, this. Yeah. And uh, so I, what I see is that they're all negative. Why? So yes. Because it's a relaxation problem. It's like in the master equation. Ah, okay, okay. So you have to go to the steady state. Okay. This is not, you know, it's a much simpler problem. <laughs> it's just a problem of relaxation. When, when you have a master equation, it has okay. a, some spectrum. So you have an eigenvalue which is zero, corresponding to the steady state equipartition, and all the other eigenvectors, eigenvalues must be negative, because I mean. Can you say, uh, or what would you expect? Uh, will these uh, these Lapunov spectra, uh, or will they? How will they behave as you tune the system, uh, uh, as you make it weaker and weaker, so to say, non-integrable? So, which yeah, brings me. How do you do that actually? So, what, what kind uh, of do you have to? Yeah, the, the, uh, the, uh, yeah. so what is a stochastic system? So, rigorously speaking, the Lapunov exponent is, is, is infinite. No? Because uh, if I take the two, two, uh, two trajectories, are completely unpredictable. Unpredict unpredictable. So, in, what I can say, this is why I said that it would correspond to a situation in which the Lapunov exponent. In, the problem one is very, 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 very large. No, I think what I mean is uh, you, you have a parameter which is, uh, I, I forgot how you called it, tau or whatever, which is this yeah. typical time between uh, yeah, the, collisions. Yeah, exactly. This is a good question because I would, I could consider, now I'm considering a situation in which I'm. I think you're frozen. An, yeah, yeah the, I, it's, it's like no? saying that I take a, a finite rate of collision. Ah, okay. Probably there is a problem with the, with the connection. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you now. Somehow, uh, on some, okay. on one side. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, so again, so, so there was a parameter, there was a parameter which you used. Yes, uh, so yeah. this 
time between two collisions. And if you, yeah, yeah. Uh, is there anything interesting about the dependence of your results on that time? As you increase the time, you kind of. Yeah, this is an interesting question. Uh, what I'm considering now is a kind of uh, situation is a situation in which I have a finite rate of collisions in a sense. So, so I, I make a, a number of collision per, per particle per unit time, which is finite. Uh, I would, could consider a situation in which I take this uh, collision rate to zero, in a sense. So I do very, very, very few collisions. And this would be more close probably to, to the, the idea of uh, an almost integrable deter deterministic system. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in fact, I, I wanted to study also this case. I didn't do it yet. Okay. But in, in, a, in a sense, uh, uh, what I'm considering here is a strongly chaotic system. It's a, it's a right. system which has a very, uh, very strong linearity, let's say. And uh, uh, what, what is your flexibility in defining other network classes, new ones or whatever ones? Um, I mean, the, the problem, if you want to study this, uh, these relaxation rates, this network, what you need to know are the eigenvectors. Mm -hmm. So in, in general, of course, you don't know them analytically, but you can do it numerically. And uh, then you have to fix the collision rule, this W. So basically this average is over this uh, W. So once you know that the, if you cannot do it analytically, you can do it uh, numerically, as I did. But the, the good thing is that it is somehow an exact thing. Just, uh... yeah. Yes, but what, what I guess what I also meant is that uh, when you when you have this local um, when you have this pairwise exchange of momenta, mm -hmm. uh, and let's say you choose this to be uh, only to happen local, as you did yeah. in these examples, yeah. then the case say of uh, an uh, a weakly disordered or say simply uh, the translation invariant system, you will see, you saw this, this connectivity, which was of the order of the system size. But that's a little bit different when you go to say, uh, uh, it seems at least when you go to uh, Hamiltonian uh, conservative dynamics with some nonlinear terms, then mm -hmm. what you see or what you could see uh, is uh, that uh, First of all, there are uh, not pairs, but maybe triplets or quadruplets of, of actions which are connected. And uh, and this, yes, so basically from there yeah, also yeah. A, a different scaling. Uh, sure, sure, sure. How, no, so we yeah. could introduce more, com is it like uh, introducing exchanges between simply triplets of... Um... Still, co still, maybe keeping the uh, doing it this conservative way. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not so sure because after all, the, the problem with this dynamics is it is always linear. Uh, yes, if you look at the, this uh, this equation, for example, so the the, the, the exact map uh, is always a linear transformation. Uh, you can introduce some form of linearity if you condition this. No, no, what I mean is that you instead of exchanging momenta between inside a pair, yeah, the, uh, uh, you throw the dice and you choose a triplet, and then you find some funny way how you exchange momenta and the triplets. Yeah, but I guess it will be always a linear transformation in actual space. It will be all, it will all in, always involve the uh, involve uh, pairs. Eh? I'm not so sure, but, but uh... okay, I see, maybe. Last question, you mentioned equipartition time. Yes. Uh, what, what is that? How do you measure that? How do you define um, The equipartition time is, uh, for a finite system, is the inverse of this spectral gap. So once you have this, uh, this um, operator that you know, and suppose you know in some way, you compute the eigenvalues of this operator. One, the first one is zero. The second one is different to zero and negative. So the absolute value is the relaxation time. The inverse is the relaxation time. Of course, when, as, as I explained here, if this, the density of this, um, the spectral density goes to zero, so if the rho of mu goes to mu to some power, then you expect the relaxation time to be inverse, inversely proportional to one over n to some power. 
If it doesn't go to zero, so if you have a gap, the, the, the relaxation time is finite. And the good thing about this model is that you can compute this exactly. I mean, numerically exactly. The usual thing, like in Boltzmann equation, it's not, not very different. So you can compute the relaxation spectrum from the collision operator. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sergei. We have also a question from Merab. Hello, Merab. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for your talk. Uh, I also have a, actually a question uh, about the same uh, figure that uh, Sergei was asking about, this uh, Lepunov spectra or Lepunov exponents figure. So uh, my, my, it's more of a clarification for me, uh, so uh, interpretation of these uh, results. So. Um, do you so as far as i understand you compare the lepunov exponents from the map that you uh, uh, used uh, to uh, to the uh, spectrum of this uh, uh, master equation or transition matrix uh, no, 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 no 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 um, no the point is the following uh, um, the map is a random map so it's mm -hmm. kind of i mean it's a stochastic process if you wish so it's has, in a sense it has infinitely lepunov exponents uh, because when you have a stochastic process, uh, there's no deterministic chaos, no? So, so what, I, what I have here is, as I explained before, what, when you introduce this operator, no? you introduce this, this, this map, uh, this is, uh, is similar to the calculation of Lyapunov exponents because you multiply random matrices. Okay. In, in the deterministic case, randomness is due to chaos. It is just due to the randomness of this process that, that I introduced. So the, this is a product of uh, the, the, the relaxation, the, 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 the relaxation spectrum is related to the, this infinite product of random matrices. Okay. So, okay. So what I said is that you, you can compute the relaxation spectrum in the same way in which you compute the uh, Lyapunov exponents. Okay. Uh, but these are not, uh, in a sense, they're not the Lyapunov exponents. Uh, but but uh, then you basically for the, relate for the confusion. I shouldn't. I have used this, this, this term probably. But then you basically relate this to the spectrum of this uh, transition matrix, right? Basically what I want to ask is this, uh, that uh, this um, spectrum of this transition matrix, you can basically compute without any uh, propagation in time or you just need one time uh, uh, diagonalization of, uh, of a certain matrix. And it's it, it depends on the model, it depends on the model. Uh -huh. for, the for the translational invariant model, so if you have the one dimensional chain, you know the eigenvectors, plane plan yes. waves, use that thing. And it turns out that th this matrix is a constant. If you take a nearest neighbor collision or for, 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 for the simplest choice of this W, eh, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, so, so in this case, you, do, you just have to diagonalize the matrix. Okay. okay. If you take a more general process, so suppose instead of taking nearest neighbors, you take... Uh, nearest neighbors or next to nearest neighbors with some probability, then this is a product of the random matrices. So this can, you cannot com compute analytically, at least okay. uh, uh, in general, and then you have to do it numerically. Uh -huh. Okay, I understand. You, usually, usually you cannot compute because it's a, pro it's a product of, of, of matrices which are uh, random with some probability. Which mm -hmm. by I, way, I understand. Uh, Okay. So uh, another question which I have is uh, about this um, approximation. Uh, could you please uh, repeat? So as far as I understand, you keep uh, the uh, the number of collisions per particle per time constant, but you also work in a, a approximation that you have infinite number of uh, collisions per time in the whole system. Yeah, is, the, is the idea is, is like the usual uh, random phase average. You start with this equation. Right? So that depends. So what you can imagine is that you just average this, this evolution over a uniform distribution of angles. Can you hear me? Because I see. Yeah, yes, yes, I can, I can, I can, I can. I can. So, so, so what, what you can figure this like imagine you have infinite, an infinite number of copies of your system. They are all subject to the same, they have an initial distribution of angles. They have the same uh, sequence of collisions, and you just average the angles of all the realizations. Then you end up with an equation which is just for the actions. 
-hmm. If you are familiar with Boltzmann equation, it's very similar. When, when you do and uh, for this approximation to be valid, uh, I need to have an uh, infinite number of collisions in my system per unit time. Is that or or large at least uh, to compare? To... No. Let's say what is important is to look at the system on a time scale which is larger than the typical uh, collision rate. Collision time. Okay. Okay. No. Suppose know. I look at the system on a time scale, and in between this this time interval. Uh, very okay, large number of collisions. It's, it's the kinetic when you do the kinetic theory of okay. gas, it's not, it's not very different. Uh, I have one uh, last question, but it's uh, more I don't know, maybe uh, a query rather. So uh, you showed the number of uh, connections uh, histograms. Uh, can you please? Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, this, this one, this one. Yes, yeah. yes, this one. So um, on the bottom left, I was uh, a little bit curious. So, uh, uh, I mean, if everything is interconnected, you would expect a peak uh, actually at 50, but I'd see uh, at, uh, let's say, 49 or something. Like there is some uh, sort of uh, uh, selection rule or something, but uh, as far as I understand, there are no selection uh, rules. Uh, disordered. I mean, I would expect this in the ordered systems, but in disordered. It's yeah, you are, mm, I, I don't know if this is an artifact. I don't know if this is an artifact of uh, of the of the graph. Uh, if this distribution ah, or, or, no, from no, zero, I understand. I understand <laughs> if it starts from zero, it should be start from one, perhaps. No, no, I think I understand. Uh, actually, now I understand that uh, it's not connected to itself, right? The action is not connected to itself. Yeah, it's correct. connected to forty-nine yeah. others. Okay. Or, or, or I don't know if this algorithm just uh, rejects this possibility. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't make a very, very, I mean, I should have done an analysis depending on N, but of course it becomes a little bit uh, complicated. The, what I wanted to show is that, is that there is a qualitative difference between these two cases. Yeah, uh, yes, I understand that. Oh, okay, thank you. So I have, I have no questions. Thank you. Do we have any other questions from the audience? It seems not. So in this case, uh, let us thank uh, Professor Lepre again. And with this, we conclude our today's uh, seminar. Thank you all thank you. for joining.